Welcome to the Global Business Women's Pod, hosted by the Greater Houston Women's Chamber of Commerce. I am Susan Dyson and extremely excited to be your podcast host. In my day job, I am proud to be the CEO, president, and founder of the Chamber. Every Thursday at 6 p.m., we will bring you inspiring stories of women who are leading in the advancement of women and girls. We will take you with us to our premier events. You will meet entrepreneurs, executives, and philanthropists who will empower and inspire you to succeed. So please mark your calendars and join us for the Empowering Global Business Women's Pod, Thursday at 6 p.m. We are so excited to, um, to interview you today. And um, looking back at your career, Bindu, what would you do differently, if anything? So looking back at my career, um, I would say early on in my career, I am a fixer. And um, whenever there was any issues in any departments, all I wanted to do was help my directors. Well, that led me down a path of burnout. So I have since learned to let my directors who are highly skilled handle these issues. And if they have any questions along the way um, that they could definitely um, stop by and ask me. And in turn, this actually helped build stronger bonds and relationships with myself and my team. That was great. And, you know, I know we've all had people help us along the way, but I know there's some special people in your life that have really been great mentors or sponsors. And we also would love to hear um, what roles your mom and dad played in your career and your choice of careers. Sure, sure. So um, definitely um, I had some mentors uh, throughout my career, but especially uh, during my CEO career. There are three women who are also CEOs within my company, uh, Sheila Boiler, Sharla Anderson, and Angie Simmons. And they are women who empower women. And they are so forthcoming with any type of guidance that I need. And I am truly, truly blessed to have them as a support system. So as far as my mom and dad, they are my rock. And um, whatever decision I make, whether it's, and I feel like I'm getting teary, sorry, <laughs> but whatever decision I make, whether it's something they agree with or don't agree with, they have always been there to support me. Um, within my times of uncertainty, they are always there to sit with me and to pray with me. So um, I'm just so blessed to have such an amazing parents like I have. That's wonderful. I I got choked up. Is that okay? I was. Yes, yes. It's great to show you're authentic. So uh, it's wonderful. Tears are great. It's not baseball, like they say. So we can (laughs) cry cry in the chamber here. Um, Yeah. So, um, and I know you have many organizations, including the chamber now that, uh, that you're passionate about their mission and that you help, but why is it important to you to volunteer in the community and how has it helped you in your career? So um, my hospital, as well as myself, my team here, love to give back to the community and to volunteer in the community. I truly feel that it gives myself and my team the opportunity to just be grateful for everything that we do have, um, especially in the climate that we are in. Um, It also um, is so rewarding, as many will will say, to just know that you're helping someone that is in need. And in turn, what it's done is um, given myself and my team the opportunity for a broader perspective on um, the patients that we care for here at my hospital. Great, great answer. Um, and, you know, looking at, at your career, I know there are so many accomplishments that you're proud of, and we would be here all day to list all of them, but I know there's some that are on top of your list. Would you share those with, you, with us today? Sure. So I feel like uh, one of the most recent accomplishments that I'm pretty proud of is that um, out of 150 hospitals within my company, Um, my hospital here in Sugarland came out number four in employee satisfaction. 
And I really, truly believe it's because my leaders and myself make it a priority to appreciate our staff. Um, we celebrate, we have fun here. Uh, some of the things we celebrate are our differences, different cultures. We celebrate our successes. We play music, we eat good food. And in turn, I truly believe that if your employees are happy, what they put out in their work is only gonna be positive. Great answer. So, you know, women are staying in the work workforce longer now and we're living longer. And I know there's more women that are entering the workforce too in different careers. So what advice would you give to a woman who is entering the workforce for the first time or, or a woman that is re-entering the work, workforce after a, a career doing something else? The advice that I would give for women entering the workforce or re-entering the workforce is don't get discouraged. There will be doors that are slammed in your face. And if that happens, you go to the back and you climb in through the window. Now, if that window is locked, go in through the chimney, find a way. Do not be discouraged from the, the storms that may come your way, the defeats that happen because there is always a way in. Oh, I love that. That is, that's great advice. It's great. And I know we think about um, how we want to be remembered. And have you really sat down and thought about what you want your legacy to be? Would, if you have, please share that with us. We'd love to hear it. Sure. So this isn't something I um, thought about, but if I had to say what legacy I would like to leave behind, um, it would be that I genuinely care for people. I strive hard daily in every interaction that I have, whether it's with my friends, my family, my coworkers, to make sure that I'm pouring out love and support in all of those interactions. So I hope that's what they remember me by. And um, let's assume that you're walking into an elevator and, and you meet someone and they say, well, what do you do, Bindu? How would you answer that? How, what is your elevator speech I'm talking about, Bindu? So if I walk into an elevator and I meet somebody new and um, this actually happens quite often and they ask me what I do, um, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is that I work in healthcare and um, I help patients regain their functionality to return back to the home. Um, and if they ask me what exactly my role is, that's when I do tell them. But otherwise, I just tell them that I work at a hospital or in healthcare helping patients get back home to their daily life. So um, what was your aha moment to get into healthcare? What was the factor that really made you think, well, gosh, that's where my passion lies? Yeah. So um, the pivotal moment in my life um, when I knew I wanted to be in healthcare um, was when my grandmother suffered a stroke and I saw all the folks that were within her um, care. And I specifically was drawn towards the physical therapy and occupational therapy. Um, and it really got me interested in being in healthcare in that respect. And so I started off my career as an occupational therapist and just worked my way up from there. Okay, and I know there's so many adjectives that we can describe Bindu by. So please share with us the one word that you think best describes you as a breakthrough woman. So the one word that I feel like would describe me if I had to pick one uh, would be authenticity. And I just truly believe that uh, within your interactions with day-to-day -day with people, if you are not being your true self, that people can see through that. And I feel like you build stronger relationships and stronger bonds if you are being authentic. And as a leader, you will have followers that will follow you, not only through the good times, but also the bad times. Thank you for watching the Global Business Women's Pod brought to you by the Greater Houston Women's Chamber of Commerce. 
We cannot wait to see you next Thursday at 6 p.m. And remember, you can always find us at ghwcc.org.